<laughs> Let's talk some toys in here. <laughs> hey, how's everybody doing today? It's the man child. All right, so today for review, I just finally got in my Master Universe, Masterverse, New Attorney, Bone Throne, or Havoc Throne with the New Attorney Skeletor. Yeah, it's a long-awaited uh, piece, I think, for a lot of people, right? The uh, throne is a pretty iconic piece of furniture <laughs> in Snake Mountain with Skeletor sitting on it. Now, you can see in the background, I have a classic throne. In a lot of my videos, people ask me, what is that? Where did I get it? What not? Yeah, I came with the Super 7 classic Snake Mountain. Really awesome piece. This one looks really cool, too, from the images. And once we get out of the box, we'll check it out. And, yeah, you got a new Skeletor as well. Um... Looks like he's sharing the same armor as this new, this other Skeletor here as well, which was a new Eternity version, came out a long time ago. But um, he has a newer head, it looks like. Uh, I'm going to say it's like the Alcala-type head, going back to them early mini-comics. Yeah, you get the Havoc staff and some other accessories, but it's really cool to finally get this piece in hand. And it is on pre-order right now with Big Bad Toy Store and the Paul Mart store. So, of course, taking a little closer look at the front of the box, we have our uh, new Attorney of Skeletory obviously sitting on the uh, Havoc Throne. Um, now, I also noticed in the background, too, you have a new Snake Staff as well. That's pretty cool. I just you know, noticed that now because I'm focusing on, on him holding the Havoc Staff, which he also comes with. And then we have our Masterverse and uh, new Attorney logo down here. Now, spinning the box around to the, say, the left side, um, looks like we have right side, excuse me, that's pretty cool. So we have Merman and Beastman, and they look very classics inspired. Now, there is a new Eternity of Merman coming out soon, um, but he looks a little different. Again, I don't have him in hand, but that reminds me of something a lot like the classics. And, of course, we have a new Eternity of Beastman out, which looks very similar to, to this, so that's pretty cool. And then, let's see, spin the box around to the very back side. Um, now here's a closer look at the bio. You want to pause and read that. And then you got some more of that giant snake that comes off Snake Mountain, the attack snake. Pretty neat. And then spin it around one more time to the other side. Check that out. So we have yeah, Evil Inn, Panther, and Screech. Now, today is the first um, day of San Diego Comic Con. They did announce a new attorney. Uh, I, want, I think it's new attorney Evil Inn for the Masterverse series. She looks exactly like this, very similar, which is cool. And there's another Panther coming out as well, which I believe just uses the um, first Masterverse. Uh, Battle Cat Mole, which a lot of people were mixed on from what I see in the images. But anyway, yeah, pretty cool art. These two are coming to the Masterverse line. All right, so obviously I laid the box down, right? Here's a look at the very top. Here's the continuation of the Snake Mountain Snake. Um, to open this up, I'm going to pop this little flap. And yeah, mine already look just ripped. But okay, so I opened it up like so. And let's see. So as far as what's inside this, all right, so you get two other boxes as well. And now, here's a quick look at both boxes removed from the main box, right? So this is what the Havoc or Bone Throne is going to come in. I'm assuming we have to assemble it. And then here's a look at the new Attorney Skeletor. And now, here's a little closer look at the new Attorney Skeletor and his box, right? Um, okay, so we already said new Attorney. It's part of Masterverse line, obviously. Some cool art on the front. And yeah, it looks like the head in there is very Cal inspired I want to say. And what's interesting, too... I think your jaw, your jaw might articulate as well. See it open. If you see that inside, looks like it might be on a like little hinge joint or something, which is cool. And spinning the box around, it's uh, yeah, just another picture image of uh, Skeletor on the Bone Throne. And here's a quick look at the art on the left-hand side of the box, looking in from the window. Just some of them, looks like some of them creatures that comes out of that snake, the Origin Snake Mountain slime pit that it comes with. At least this one on the bottom. Check that out too. You have some kind of specter creature up high in the background here. And now here's a quick look at the art on the right hand side of the box, looking in from the window. And check that out. So I wonder if he comes with a spare head or the hood and come off. So you get like a uh, skeletor with just a skull with no hood. That's awesome. And of course, that new snake staff. So moving on to the box with the throne in it or parts for the throne, right? So of course, we have, uh, you can see the art and the uh, ram skull on the front. Got some bricks like Snake Mountain, all the vines. Uh, let's see, spinning it around, just some more art. Yeah, it's all like little. Um, Pieces, faces from the Snake Mountain, like with the Origins one or the Classics have something similar to that. And this one just says Skeletor on the very side and the back. It's just more of the overall brickwork. And let's see what's inside this. So to open it up, all right, so you open it up on the side, like so, all right. And um, got Evil Lord of Destruction down bottom here. And it's, all right, so you got to assemble it. It's kind of what you get inside the box. 
Okay, so obviously I removed all the parts from the box. A lot of this small sensitive stuff is all in this, you know, paper that I, yeah, I took out. I'm not going to show all that, like these fire effects. You get a background here, which is pretty cool. Here's the directions. You get the main base. Um, yeah, here's that snake staff. We'll, we'll look at everything in details. We get into, it, you know, everything. All right, so as far as the throne, you get the back piece, these pieces. Um, here's the main skull there. Get some more, like... Okay, pieces here, which is pretty cool. Now, what I noticed too in the directions, so let me bring the directions in, right? So here's your instructions guide, right? Here's all the parts, obviously. You can see. Um, okay, it's going to need AAA batteries too. It doesn't come with that. Good to know. I can see that. And then you can just kind of get an idea how everything's going to go together, which, um, yeah, I'm not going to show all that. I'll show it now as far as the directions. I'll put everything together and then we'll get into it. Now, what I noticed too is. You get this diorama background piece, and the main box is actually a riser piece that this the main throne base is going to sit on top of as well. And that's where this um, cardboard piece will plug in, so that's that's also interesting. All right, so let's take a quick look at all the parts with this throne, and um, then I'll assemble it. I wasn't going to show it all, but yeah, I think it's pretty simple. This, um, after we look at everything, I'll pop it, all the parts together, and maybe that will help some people out. Um... Anyway, so this is the main base, obviously, right? Just bringing up a closer look. That's, uh, yeah, really cool. See where the chair is going to go. You can see these skulls on the bottom with these little um, bone antlers that come off there. Pieces, pretty neat. Very, kind of similar to that classics one, but a little larger. There's our pegs. You can see the overall design, the colors of everything. Now, these are going to be LEDs, obviously, for these fire effects. They're going to plug and zoom. And then flipping this around to the very bottom... So this is where the batteries are going to go. So to remove this piece to put the batteries in, I just brought a medium-sized Phillips screwdriver. I'm going to back the screw out like so. And then once the screw's backed out, this piece is going to come out. You can see two little clips. And there's our spot for yeah, three AAA batteries, which I already got. Got some door cells. I'll put all those in. All right, so with the batteries in, I flipped it back around to the very top or bottom of the base. And it looks like the main button is right here. See that? Okay, so when you push it, that's pretty cool. Looks like it's flaming effects, just where the flames are going to go. Now, I did read in the directions that it has an automatic shutoff. I'm not sure of the timing on it. And it says if you press this button again, you can change the colors. So see that? It can go from red to green. One times blue. Okay. And back to red. Yellow. I don't... It's like three or four different color patterns. I've seen. Okay, now it's a really deep blue. See, so I press it again. Goes back to the reddish color. That's pretty neat. But there's no off on the button. Apparently, these shut off. So for now, or you can just flip it back around, open it up, pop one of the batteries out. It should shut it down if you don't want it to run too long. But yeah, I wish it had a shut off on the button. So once again, I just shut it down by opening this cover up, as I mentioned. I just popped the battery out, put it back in, tightened it. And yeah, I want the shuts down for now. Because again, I don't know how long this is going to run for. I didn't seem to read that in instructions. But anyway, let's uh, move forward with the rest of the parts. So once again, here's a look at all the main pieces to assemble the throne. Now you can assemble it by itself and put it on the main base or put it on a base and assemble a little at a time. We're just going to do it all as one piece and then I'll snap it on the base. So here's a little closer look at the main part of the throne itself, right? What we're going to build off of. Um, yeah, really awesome detail, sculpting. I like, of course, everything's finished in a bone color. It's all bone. But you got a lot of things going on here with uh, some... Yeah, large leg bones, pelvis bone, whatever the seat is made out of. It's a large, yeah, creature, dinosaur pelvis bone or something. Got this, all the horns coming off here on both sides. Right, here's the main neck piece. There's the bottom, and there's all the back of everything. So here's a closer look at the main skull or that Havoc skull that's going to sit on top of the throne. Really awesome detail. Again, you have just all molding a bone piece. And this is um this is all rubber. You see the main horns can move around, stuff like that. Nothing articulates, it's all one piece, but made of rubber. And yeah, really awesome. I like the details in this. You can see the eye sculpted in there, the main you know, the fangs. You got a little uh, loop on the top, you can see that, and extra horns here too that are really soft. And then of course you get these two massive uh it's like giant bone jaws or something like that, or it could have been something for a clawful or <laughs> something, but uh they're also really rubbery as well, and you can see where they're going to plug into the um, forward parts of the throne. So you do get a left and right side. Or actually, I don't. Doesn't look like they matter. Look the same as far as sculpting and design. 
And there's a closer look at the main spine piece. It's going to snap on the back of the throne. Check that out. It's one big vertebrae. Yeah, all individual, the, you know, all vertebrae pieces are all sculpted. You got three rows of them. You can even see the little discs inside. Really cool. And of course, the bone, the horns on top. And then you get like this large pelt piece. It's going to be the uh, main cushion for the seat. Yeah, it looks like uh, they ripped it off a of grizzler or something. Same kind of hair it looks like from the Origins one. And it looks like it's going to clip, go through the seat with these two little tabs. So once again, bringing the main bone throne section in. Going to put the skull on top like so. Just going to push it into that ball peg and snap right on. And oh, that's cool too. So it can also articulate as well. You can move it left to right. It can go down and back. And of course, flipping the back of the main throne around, this little spine piece is going to snap on like this. You can see where that peg is going to line up in this peg piece. And then the, these larger square sections. And now dropping down to the main C part, going back to this furry pelt piece, right, or the main uh, cushion for your seat. So you can see these little black tabs on each side. At first I thought they were Velcro. It doesn't look like it. I thought they opened up. No, they're just like sewn and bent like that. Now you can see the seat, there's a, like the front section um, goes down more beyond these. So that looks like the front. And to put these on... In the directions flipping the seat around to the bottom it looks like you're just going to push these through like that and they're just going to clip around and hold both the left and right side and then a piece is going to look something like that you got to adjust it again you can see i pulled the yellow one through yeah they're not velcro it's kind of like see this one wants to fall out i don't think i like that design i thought maybe it'd be a velcro strap to go around here it's not what i'm seeing it just sits on like that it's really sloppy so these these things you got to kind of mess around with and then once they are on yeah, the larger part's going to hang down over the seat when Skeletor sits on it, I'm, I guess. So, jumping back over to the main base once again, we have the throne assembled. You can see that little tab's going to snap in there, and I got my this fur piece on. It looks like once that's on, it's going to snap and lock down. Let me see, like, like that. All right, so I got that snapped in. That's what we have so far. And yeah, these other larger jaw pieces, I'm sorry, they snap onto the base, not onto the throne. And again, it doesn't matter left to right side, but you can see where the plug's in here. And this one's going to go on that side. You hear a click, all right? And I'll show you a quicker example. The other one. And that one's going to go on that side until it clicks. And there you go. And there's the uh, bone thrown with the all the bone pieces set up as far as the base, what it looks like. Pretty cool. Really big. All right, so now that the main base is already set up, let's check out the rest of the accessories it's going to snap on at. So obviously, these are those... Um, you have fire effects. It's going to go over those LEDs. And that's really cool. Again, they're both identical. It doesn't look like they matter. Oh, uh, like a silicone rubber, translucent. What's yeah, obviously to make the flame effects. That's an awesome piece. Pretty cool. We got these extra metal um, arrows, right? Sculpted on the uh, both ends that the fire's coming out of. All right, so I put one on this side already. It snapped right in, as you can see. And then to show you how it went in, just put the one on the other side. And should I? You got to kind of twist and mess around until you hear a click. There you go, like that. And yeah, it says in the directions, like one time assembly. I guess if you want to get them out, you would have to heat this base and pop it out. And they can still spin around if you wanted to move the position of these pre sculpted flames, which that's pretty cool too. And then for the final two accessories that's going to snap onto that main throne base, you get like these decorative, um, you know, I guess they're supposed to represent like brass or bronze um, molded snake you can see there's three cobra snakes right and again they're both identical so yeah pretty cool i give you this now the purpose of these i mean not only for effects is they're going to hold they can hold the weapons all right so they're going to go in the back and then let's bring in the snake staff take a little closer look at that so that's your other yeah staff which is pretty cool the cobra yeah that's a neat accessory it has the bottom part and the main staff is very similar to the i think the havoc staff um yeah, you got some wrapping up here. It's painted like cloth. But that's a neat accessory as well. And you can see, so the main purpose of these, I said, the weapon holders you're going to use for both this and the Havoc Staff if you didn't want it in Skeletor's hand. Looks like you're going to push it down like this when it's on the base. See that? It's going to hold it like that upright. So once again, bringing the base back in. Of course, we're looking at the back side of it. Um, put these weapon holding artifacts on the back. Now, there is a slot you can see on each one. And the, the main slot, how they're going to go in is in the very back of the space. So when you line them up, you want to get that in there. See, it's going to snap. And then you're going to do the same with the other one. 
And again, they're both identical from what I can see. All right, locking like that. And that's pretty much it. And then going back to that weapon, or whatever weapons you want to put in, I'll just put the snake staff in once again. You can see how soft these are, by the way. So when you go to push something in there, you just kind of want to hold it up till that piece goes in there. And it should pretty much hold it like that. And there you go. That's pretty much the overall setup of the main base and bone throne, right? So let's give a quick uh, look around. Check it out. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It uh, gives the classics a run for its money. And then the most important part with our flame effects on, once again, let's hit the button. Oh, check that out. Shut some lights off here. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And I'll hit the button. It'll change the color. So we go yellow, green. Holy cow, that is so cool. Hit the button again. Let's see. We get blue. And it again. I guess it goes back to purplish and red. All right. So there's like three or four colors. I think four. Yellow. Yeah, it blinks all around. That is, look at that. Wow, that's really impressive. Let me just put one light on. See what it looks like. Wow. Good job, Mattel. It came out so cool. So before we get into the new Eternia Skeletor and uh, put them on the throne, of course, I want to do a comparison between our new Masterverse throne and the Classics. So that's those two together. And obviously, I removed the Skeletor. This base didn't come with it. This was like a NECA alien base that I used to help elevate that. So it's neat that we have a box that can elevate that, which I'll show in a little while. Um, but this is a really cool thr throne. This is more filmation inspired, if you can see that, which I like. And I do like the coloring on this. There's different details. But, you know, I got to say, and the figures are very awkward on this. They don't really fit that well. So I never liked about this. They slide off. Now, this is that Masterverse Barbarian Skeletor, excuse me. Has the same armor. I put the alternative head on him. But to get him to fit without raising, like, really positioning him, yeah, he would keep sliding out. And you can see how the back of the hood or the head would hit this. It should have been bigger like this one is. Now, while I have the Skeletor out, let's put him on and see what he looks like, right? That would make sense. Look at that. It fits perfect. The feet's even hanging off. Um, I'm sorry. i got to sit down like that. And you can see there's little pegs, too, that you can lock the feet in. That's really cool to catch them from slipping. And I don't know what this is. He has fishing string on him. <laughs> okay. But look at that. So that's our first example for a Masterverse figure, Barbarian Skeletor, to sit in the throne. Awesome. Yeah, a lot better job than this. There are details I like in this a little better. And the filmation inspiration, as I mentioned. But, yeah, this is way cooler so far as far as design and size. So the other thing I want to do before we take a look at the other Skeletors, I guess, let's finish the rest of the base with this up, or at least the box part. We know that's going to elevate it. So we already know that's, this is the main box. I'm going to shut these, you know, push these uh, main ends in. So according to directions to put this back piece onto the main box, it's telling you just to push it right in, but that's, yeah, not, not how it seems to work. I mean, the main tab, if you can see that in the bottom, you can see the cuts in the back there. But it looks like these ends here, you got to hook in. So you got to bend this open and you got to hook everything in here, push this in and then these little side slots also got to push in. So let me work on that and get it all together. And it's going to pretty much look like that when it's all together. I had a lot of trouble getting these tabs and I even ripped some in the back. It might just be my fault. See this, it's like, it's just the way it's warped and trying to force it all together. I got a gap here. I, yeah, it would have been cool if it was a big piece of plastic or something, a better base. I don't, I don't think I really like this. Might just be my box again, the way I did it. But anyway, for the most part, it's what it's going to kind of look like when you see where we're back here all together. And lastly, of course, I put the main throne on top of this riser piece or box, right? And got our background on again. I did a little bit of damage to mine, but that's pretty much it. Um, Yeah, it's neat. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I'm going to use this box and raise it that high. There's no need to. I do like that background piece. I might take that off and find another way to wrap it around to that. I don't need this, but they do. that's the overall setup, you know, what they want to the strone on if you want to raise it. And the other point is <laughs> these fire effects been running for about 10 minutes already and still haven't shut off. So I, I don't know. You know, I thought maybe holding the button, that just changes the colors we already went through. Yeah, there's no shut off. Again, it's some type of time thing. Maybe, it's, yeah, 20 minutes, half hour, who knows? Or you just got to pop a battery out. But I think I'm going to remove a battery again just to shut it off to save power. And uh, yeah, let's move on to our uh, Skeletor. So once again, moving forward. Now finally taking a look at the new Eternia Skeletor that's packed with this um, Havoc or Bone Throne. So that's pretty cool because you're kind of getting two things in one. You know, you're getting a throne and you're getting a figure, which is this new Skeletor. Now, he does come with that a Akala-inspired head, as we talked about in the package. It does have an articulated jaw and removable hood, which I'm going to show in a few seconds. 
If you're not familiar with Akala, um, the term Akala comes from, I, I believe, Alfredo Akala was the main artist that drew several of the early mini comics, going back to like the Lordis Power style um, characters and designs in the 80s and I I believe that's kind of where the concept come from. I, I think I'm I think that's what it is anyway. It's where that term comes from if you're not familiar. Anyhow, so yeah, he does get that head and everything else is basically the same as far as the first release New Attorney of Barbarian Skeletor. It's kind of the point I want to make before we take a closer look at him. Now, he does have the alternative head which I already mentioned. Of course, he's the one that sits on that filmation bone throne your classics. And he came with this. This was the original head he came with, if you're not familiar. Everything looks the same as far as the armor. Obviously, we have a different head. He came with a different weapon. But even it's the same Ram Staff. So this is the Ram Staff that comes with this. New Attorney of Bone Throne Skeletor. This is the Ram Staff that comes with this one. I painted the eyes, by the way. They didn't come like that. But the skin tones... Okay, they are very different. You can see that. And of course, the colors are different on all the armor pieces. Now, aside the heads, though, it looks like this main armor piece. See that? It's removable. It's the same thing on the Skeletor. The cape is the same. The lower armor is the same. And the other point I want to make... Um, so, let me get him out of the way. He also has a regular smaller chest. Again, we're going to get to him real soon. I'll break all the armor down, stuff like that. But I was hoping he would have the larger chest like the new Eternia or the um, Revolution He-Man. He doesn't. So, it's... Everything the same aside the colors and the heads. And now taking a little closer look at this new head sculpt and yeah, the overall hood because it comes off um, from what I see. I think we have to remove the head to remove it, which we'll do soon. But yeah, check that out. So it's a fully articulated jaw, which looks incredible with this overall skull design. So as I already mentioned a couple times, I believe this is inspired off that Alcala design um, from the mini comics. I think anyway, it's um, yeah, look at the way the teeth are sculpted. How the, the sockets, how deep they're sculpted back into the skull. And then you have the eyes sculpted outwards, glowing, painted red. They got some like black highlights painted in there. The overall skull itself is like a, it's a yellow with a green wash. And then some areas also have like a, like a dark wash, like it's aged or dirty or something like that. So yeah, the jaw, check that out. Close it all away, open it because it's obviously articulated. So as far as the articulation with the jaw closed, we can go all the way left to right, go down and back. Now you notice too that the hood, how sloppy it's moving around because again, it's a separate piece. But, you know, you it has play to move it around. So you kind of push it back, expose the skull a little bit or push it forward, you know, around the neck and the head to the left and right, however you want it to look. But that is really cool. Not only is it a cool skull, but um, just that the head, it, that the overall hood is... Yeah, separate piece. I didn't expect that with this Skeletor figure. And then, of course, let's remove the head. And then with the head removed off the ball peg of the body, it looks like to remove the head or the hood. Let me see. Okay, so it pulls right out like so. And then here's a little closer look at the main hood off the body. Yeah, really flexible. I like all the... Just the way it's sculpted. It looks like real material, but it's not. It's all made out of plastic. I like the colors, too, on this Skeletor with the use for the armor. This metallic purplish tone, I want to say. And once again, here's a little better look at that skull outside the hood, right? So we already know that the jaw articulates and go, look how far it can go down, all the way down, right? So we mentioned, close. <laughs> um, yeah, awesome paint, awesome sculpt. So jumping back to the Skeletor body with the head or skull on without the hood, let's quick look at that setup. Yeah, that's awesome. So as far as the articulation about the hood, left to right, down and back. Now, this extra armor piece does hinder it a little bit but for the time being as i go over the rest of the parts articulation i'm just gonna leave the hood off because we're familiar with that i'll put it back on later but um yeah it's so awesome to have a skeletor finally without a hood just a skull uh there's some custom ones out there but i don't think masterverse did anything like that yet everything had a hood or a different type of head anyway so with the skull back on or head back on moving down so yeah he has this extra piece of armor right again going back to this First release, Barbarian Skeletor, but it's painted different, obviously. Again, I like the purple colors a lot better on this than this Skeletor. It's very dark. Um, it does this thing, but it's flat. Even the tones of the body, it's, it's you know, just doing its own thing. But this, yeah, I like the overall colors of this figure. The skin, the armor. Uh, so this piece, you can see it has two tones, obviously. And then these 
other de dis detailed sections of the armor gold, right? And all the outer parts are purple. So you can see flipping it around, there's the cape, right? Um, yeah, I love this cape, the material. How, uh, you know, how just how large it is. Look how far it spreads out. Spread it all the way out like so. All right, pull it up, looks like that. Now, what's cool is to take this extra armor piece with the cape off the body and the head. Even if it had the hood on or another head, it just pops right off. And then here's a quick look with that extra shoulder armor with the cape off the body, right? So we already talked about the front piece, the inside of it. And the main cape, you know, the overall, just how it's cut. The length, how it goes out. It even has cuts on the bottom if you see that. Um, now, this is possible to remove it. You can see that it has these little peg, these um, sections on, or these little peg ends, these snaps that lock onto the main armor. But just like my Barbarian Skeletor, because I remember re reviewing him a long time ago, yeah, mine don't come off. They're like pushed in and then glued. So you'd have to cut these off to remove this cape. If you wanted to do that for some reason, it is possible. But for the most part, it ain't coming off. But anyway, that's that piece off the body. All right, so moving on, bringing Skeletor in once again with just the skull head on without the hood. So he has the main, it's like iconic Skeletor armor, exactly like the Barbarian one come with, but again, color different. Yeah, I love the way to, um, the crossbones have extra paint, that gold. You have like a little silver in here in the middle piece, right? We're all familiar with these flaps. And if you spin it around with this, he also has a weapon holder for a sword, which this figure doesn't come with. But if you get a sword from Skeletor or wherever, that's what that's for. It's not It's not going to fit. The ram staff doesn't fit in there or the Havoc staff. Anyway, um, so to remove this, there's two buckles, straps, which I like better than the first release Revelation where we had those little pops. They were, I don't know, something was mixed on them. So, yeah, let me remove these two, and let's take the armor off the body. All right, so I got both of these removed. I just did it off camera because I had to fiddle with them. And once you break both of these snaps with a little bit of work, it looks like now... All right, so we got to pull his head off again. It's easier, and then the armor will flip over the neck like so. And then once again, here's a quick look at this main armor off the body, right? So we were talking about the colors. You can get a weapon hold of these, and you can just see the overall flaps and what the inside look like and how flexible it is. And now here's another look with the Skeletor body to head on with all the armor pieces removed, right? Remove the cape, the main armor, got the hood removed, um, just that skull on. So moving down, you can just see the overall colors on the uh, skin. Now this does have a wash in it under my lights. Yeah, I just noticed that now. So the body's light blue and has dark, like a dark wash all over it. Um, okay, I guess that's different. Yep, just a regular style buck, first release, Revelation buck we'll call it. Not the larger one. Um, I'm very really familiar with the articulation with the head. So the arms are all the same. He comes with as far as the hands. So you can see on the right side, it's the uh, kind of a point. It, you can hold the Havoc staff with his hand or it's a point finger on his side. And then he has a fully closed hand, uh, you know, a semi-open hand on the left side. As far as the articulation, as far as with this figure, if you're not familiar, we can go up, down, forward, back, has a bicep swivel. Bend up, the, you know, bend up the elbow, pinless joints, go way up to the face. And, of course, this hand can spin, goes in and out in hinge joint. The other arms are all the same. And this hand, too, spins just a hinge joint, to go, hinge joint that goes in and out. And then you got the ab crunch here up top. That can spin. You can go forward and back. Spin at the waist, right? Front, and there's the back. And then moving down, he just has that iconic new attorney Skeletor style belt. Right, you can see exactly like the Barbarian Skeletor, but painted, you know, cast it different with this newish color in the purple tone, and the metallic in it, which I like. You got like a purple highlight here, and this, um, yeah, this main bird. I don't know what that is. It looks like a main eagle or something, bird face coming out of that armor. Okay. Um, now, this is not removable unless there is a way if you're going to customize it to heat this off. And it's a procedure to pull a loincloth off. Some people aren't familiar with that. It's the only way to remove it. These don't break in half, obviously, like with the origins. So, moving down to the legs, as far as the articulation, go all the way out with a split with this loincloth or armor guard on. Kick forward, go back, bend at the knee, has the thigh cut, right? And then moving down, he has like these, um, yeah, these really cool looking. Uh, <clears throat> like shin guards or gauntlets, like or half boots you call them, but I think they're like just shin shin uh, gauntlets. Um, yeah, again, really cool kit. The same purple tones is up on the belt and stuff like that. Has some extra highlights, purple painted, and you can spin at these. They can be removed if you want to and peg and put regular boots on the feet. 
And then he just has the you know, typical Skeletor feet, New Eternia Skeletor style feet, which can go up and down and rock side to side. So once again, I just set the New Eternia Skeletor all back up with his armor, the hood and stuff. That's going to keep him. I really like that look. Um, and I also really like the look with just the skull without the hood. But yeah, I'm going to leave it as is. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to confirm is that this does not, you know, this particular body and figure does not have those drop hip joints like a lot of the newer figures have or come around in the last few waves. Some of my videos, I missed that, but now I know to look for it because that seems to be the pattern with the newer figures, but this one does not have those. If you're not familiar, you know, you have the split articulation, you kick forward and all that stuff, but basically the joints will drop and it makes the figure taller. It's better for articulation. They can push all the way in. So this is one of the older bodies. He does not have that. So once again, moving forward, taking a look at the accessories that this new attorney of Skeletor comes with. So they just give him a pair of... Um, extra hands so you get a complete punch and fist that's going to go on the right side has a hinge joint that goes in and out when it's stuck of course and then you have like a spell casting hand or an open hand that's going to go on the left hinge joint also goes in and out so you get those and then for his last accessory of course he comes with his iconic um havoc staff or ram staff which i already showed but if you're not familiar with this there's a little closer look at the details yeah i love the way the ram horns are sculpted the overall head now this can spin it doesn't or it doesn't articulate and go back and forth, but it can spin all around. The main color on the top kind of matches. It looks like the hood of the Skeletor, and then the lower part of staff matches all the armor. So it's kind of, um, there's two different colors going on. But yeah, really great detail and excellent colors. And of course, there's a look with Skeletor holding his Havoc staff. And I just put it in the right hand with that point finger, which works. All right, take a look at that setup. And you can also put it in this hand, which probably makes more sense because it's completely closed. But what I'm going to do is let's... um. Put the Cobra staff in this hand as well, and he can uh, hold both staffs. And there's a quick look at that setup. So yeah, we have our Skeletor with all his armor on, the hood, right? Everything has a Ram staff in one hand, his Cobra snake staff in the other, and that's uh, pretty much the whole setup as far as the Skeletor with all accessories included. And now jumping back over to the Bone Throne, of course, is the back side of it, and I do have it off the riser. We'll put it back in a little while. Just put some figures in this. Of course, our Skeletor, most importantly. Um. But going back to these little artifact pieces, again, what we already noticed Cobra 1 going this way. It doesn't matter what side. It's going to put it in the left side. And then the Ram Staff, or any of them, you know, you have this one, that one, or whatever. It's going to go into this side like that. And, um, yeah, it looks like that's how it's going to hold both of those. So once again, taking a look at the front of it, let's put our uh, new Eternia Skeletor in the Bone Throne. Um, so we have both staffs in. And um, we have these little pegs for his feet like I showed earlier if you want to put the feet in it might help hold them but see it's like kind of fighting me so i gotta push the legs you gotta mess around with your articulation now when you do that you're gonna bend this armor skirt piece right and when it stays like that it gets stuck and bends in that position that's the same thing happened to my um kind of pointed out people care you know to this first release look at that how the rubber's now bent so you'd have to heat this and bend it if you want to ever take them off that's that's going to be the have, you know, problem putting this figure in for long periods of time with this rubber piece. Anyway, and here we go. There's our new Eternia Skeletor set up on a new Bone Throne. Yeah, I had to mess with it a little bit. I want to do it off camera. It's how you want to position the cape, the arms, get the feet in those pegs, stuff like that. Move the arms around, but or legs around, excuse me. But for the most part, it's perfect. A lot better than that other, um, this other Super 7 throne. I hate to say it. This is cool, but yeah, they don't fit well in that. This is great. Yeah, look at all that. And then, of course, you know, you want to remove one of the staffs. Yeah, we'll do the uh, snake staff. And now, there's a quick look with that snake staff in the left hand. He's holding it, laying, resting on the ground. I have his point figure pointing at, yeah, yelling at Evil Lynn or Beast Man or something, Snake Mountain. Just a quick look at that setup. Yeah, really awesome. I, lo I absolutely love the way this Bone Throne and just the overall design came out so far. And now, of course, I brought in the box and that background diorama with this lower base and the, the whole Skeletor set up the way I have them with the staff and hand and point and finger, all that good stuff. So there's a quick look at that setup. Um, yeah, again, I, I just think this is kind of big. I'm, I'm not going to use it, but I'm definitely going to use that background. So the next thing, of course, with this setup, and we already went over everything with Skeletor, let's put the lights back on again. So I'm going to press this button, shut some lights off, take a look at that. Awesome. All right. Let's um, hit the button again. There's the green. Hit the button again. There's the blue. Hit the button again. Got the hit a purplish effects or orange, how it mixes. And then let's see, four. So back to green, bluish again. 
it's it's really what an awesome setup. I gotta say, it just look it looks like real fire flickering, really creepy. It's um the overall throne design. I just I'm so excited over it. Just did such a great job. Really cool. So jumping ahead once again, uh, if you notice, I put a classic Terra Claws Skeletor that I had loose in, and I took this one out. So I, of course, want to see how a classic figure fits. In this case, Skeletor, I just put the snake staff in hand, see if he can hold it. And yeah, he fits really well. Um, again, these little pegs for feet. Let me see. All right, yeah, they kind of fit with the classics. The classic's a little more awkward, so he wants to slide out, where the Masterverse, they have better articulation. But for the most part, that's what it looks like, and fits the classics good, at least the Skeletor. And of course, lastly, we got to try an Origin Skeletor. Yeah, they're really awkward. Just use my Screech 2-pack one. He also has an articulated jaw, really cool hood design. Well, yeah, they don't really have the articulation um, for some of these chairs. See that? He just wants to fall out. You can kind of make it work. Let me see if the feet can hit these pegs. I don't know if they're going to fit. Eh, a little bit. It kind of stands up really. So, yes and no. But, yeah, that's what he looks like. If you're going to use the pegs standing. And if you don't want to use them, try to get these legs. Let me try to articulate the legs a little better. How about something like that? Okay. Um. All right, there you go. He's going to sit like that with the legs kicked out. And you can, you know, move around and feet stuff. So, yeah, it works and it looks fun. All right, again, we have our fire going in the background. And that's, uh, yeah, pretty much it. All right, so that pretty much sums it up. And that's my overall review on the new Master Universe, Master Verse, Skeletor, Bone Throne. I got to say, what an awesome piece. I absolutely love it. It fits him, just this particular Skeletor or the Classics, or even the Origins, but especially for the Master Verse, awesome. A lot better than that Classics one. That one's, uh, that looks cool. I like that. And it's probably going to still stay in my background because it's so big. Because I thought about, I'm going to put this in, you know, put this in the background now, but it ain't going to work. Just, it's a shelf hogger. I'll say that. Especially with this big box piece on the bottom, which I'm not going to use. I do like the background. I absolutely love these LED fire effects. And it's so cool that you have the little switch cut in as part of the brickwork, right? And you can hit it one, two, three, four times. You get different color patterns. Now, I did notice messing around with this. I'm like, I'm surprised you don't hold this for a certain amount of time and shut these off. I, I didn't see that in directions. It says they're timed. So you probably do that too. But if you press it down, let me see if I can do it again. Yep, see that? After about four or five seconds, it does shut them off. So I just figured that out now. I had a feeling on that, but yep. So I want to confirm that. So it is shut off. And then you hit it on and puts those back on. That's great because you shouldn't have to take the batteries out. That was my fault. Um, but and then the Skeletor you get. It's just so cool that you get another new Attorney of Skeletor. I do like this design. I was hoping it would have the newer, larger chest like the Revolution He-Man. I have a feeling you're going to see that in the new, uh, new Attorney of Battle Armor Skeletor. It's going to be coming out soon. So you're just getting a typical body, but I do like the colors, the overall armor. And again, it's just a new attorney, a barbarian Skeletor without the head, different colors I already mentioned. But this head too, this Akala head, if that's what it's inspired off of, awesome. One of, one of the best heads yet, and that you can remove the hood and the skull and the jaw articulates. You cannot ask for a better head as far as that. Um, And then you get the, you know, the Havoc staff is cool. I like this Cobra staff you get, neat accessory. It's pretty. It's uh, also interesting that you have these pieces in the back. There's artifacts to hold it, but these are really rubber. If you can see that, they're not practical. Like this one's warped, so it's uh, not the worst problem. But this staff now, it's like pushing it forward. It's falling. It doesn't like stand straight. Like this one is in the back, and I'm sure after a while it's going to do the same thing. It's um, yeah, you can just like put something, hold them against the bone, throw them. It's not not the worst problem. Or put it in Skeletor's hand, but. Side that, just awesome. You know, you, you got to get this. If you didn't pre-order, I think Big Bad Toy Store has it now. As I said, the Paul Mart store and stuff like that. One of the best pieces yet. And the Bone Throne itself. That throne is incredible looking with the, the design, the overall colors, you know, just the yeah, bone. Really neat. So glad to have it. So I appreciate everybody watching. Until next time, take care.